out. We hit 2K subs. Hey, thank you, last. Let's go. Flex it for last. We hit 2K subs, and that means it is time for a season of Souls tier list. Got to go through and rank all of the characters in the game. All right. Step one. We got Achilles. That's right. We got a long list ahead of us, folks. So Achilles is interesting. Because Achilles does really, really well at higher levels of gameplay. But he still doesn't get picked that much. And he does really, really bad at low levels of gameplay. Presumably because his clear is tough to utilize. And because his, tier, his clear is tough to utilize, I imagine it hurts him. So I'm going to throw him over here in this A tier. Still a good character. But he's hard for a lot of people to play. Then we got Agni. Agni <sighs> sucks so bad in the early game. And his mid game is great. He loves to get into the middle stages of the match. Um, but his pre-level five is like so garbage. <laughs> that it makes him harder to play. So I'm going to throw him down in this B tier because the game can really snowball out of control. As is shown by our matches today, uh, the vast majority of them were 10-minute snowballs. So if you get too far behind those first 10 minutes, there's just no way to come back uh, from a 5K deficit, you know, when that happens. So you don't want to be in that position. Ugh. Next up, Amazan Cobb. Amazan Cobb uh, only really gets played when people are trolling. Uh, almost entirely gets played as a solo lane hunter. Uh, and believe it or not, solo lane hunters during a very prominent tank meta slash warrior solo meta is not the play. Uh, no matter who I, no, no matter who is telling these people the AMZ is the play. Outpooch is better than people think he is but they tend to play him like he's a completely troll character like i see people pick output solo in support when really solo lane is okay but you're better off just having a different character as a mage though he's a very difficult mage to kill in the mid lane because of the sustain from his bodies so you can get away with a lot of cool stuff on the outpooch in the mid lane. He actually has great damage right now in gray zoning. Um, he's kind of the opposite. Hey, he's got a he's got a way better early game than Agni does, and that's saying something. AMA, this character sucks. Don't really know what else to say about AMA. She has no clear. She's an auto attack god and an ability based god meta. Uh, her kit is more supporty, but she doesn't really work at all as a support. Uh, she has to be played in the solo lane, but she really wants to buy a golden blade to help out with her clear. Usually when AMA is the best, she ends up being an auto attack hybrid jungler. That's usually when she's best because she actually can get good damage. Uh, but right now it is not the meta for auto attack warriors. You're going to see a lot of the auto attack warriors at the bottom of this list. And her very prominent ADC. Pretty difficult to play. Land the Impale, win the 1v1. Miss the Impale, lose the 1v1. Higher skill cap character. Does decent right now in this meta. Anubis, traditionally right now not doing very good. Anubis really likes the lifesteal items. The lifesteal items are okay. I would say Typhon's Fang is notably the best of them but anubis kind of suffers from the outpooch problem of you walk at him and he dies except for a uh, outpooch is good at keeping himself alive because of his passive and anubis is not at all good at keeping himself alive uh if your jungler never rotates to the lane anubis is amazing Ao quang Ao Kwong is a good god right now that is underutilized he should really be used as a flex pick when you need magic damage in the jungle in particular. When you can utilize Alquang in the jungle, big attack speed build, 
Uh, big movement speed build. He can utilize the tail kinds and do more, but all that kind of cool stuff. Actually, a really good god right now in the jungle in order to get uh, magic damage uh, in the jungle, which can be hard to do right now. There's not a lot of good magical junglers. Aphrodite, still one of the best gods in the game. Uh, one of my go-to bands right now. At a very high level in ranked, she is still a, a, an indomitable force. She counters so many characters. She gets played as a support. She instantly wins the duo lane clear because she's got great clear on top of her sustain. That means they get all the shield buffs. She counters pretty much every mid laner. Uh, just, she's not fun to play against, and it's not a good time. She, she's played all the time. All the Well, I, I would say she's played all the time, but she's banned all the time, so she actually doesn't get played that often. <laughs> <laughs> but when she does get played, she wins. Apollo! Apollo's kit is dated. He has, like... There's just characters that do everything that Apollo does, but better. Maybe in a world where Silver Branch Bow had unlimited stacks again, and so Apollo could be, like, the only guy to get, like, a full hundred stacks or something... Maybe there'd be room for him, but right now it's like, why not play Chernobog? There's just better hunters. Arachne, speaking of characters that are not very good. Auto attack based jungler. Some of the auto based junglers are doing okay right now. Uh, specifically like Baka Mercury are doing well right now. Arachne's kit, not doing well in this meta. Her hard CC on her two requires her to get three autos off, which can be a big ask depending on who you're going against. Her three is countered by so many different characters. Not a very strong jungler right now. It takes a while to get a going, has to go to the Golden Blade, all that stuff. Ares. Ares is one of the best gods in the game right now. Uh, as far as supports go, he has consistently had one of the higher win rates all season long. A lot of characters that you're going to see higher on this list are going to also have really good lane clear. He gets lane pressure no matter where he is. His chains do an absurd amount of damage coming from the support role. And when you look up at your T screen, then you realize you're 25 minutes in the game and your Ares has top damage and top kills. That's why. Artemis. Another not crazy good character. She's about as good as Apollo. They're good in different ways. She does really like to get into the team fight stage of the game. That is where she thrives. But getting her to the team fight stage of the game uh, can be a nearly impossible task. Can be a nearly impossible task. RDO. You see no RDOs because RDO blows. She can't play support. She's really just a solo laner. She doesn't have the itemization right now for the Guardians in order to make herself work over in the solo lane. Her only... Her only benefit is the fact that she does have that AoE cripple field. And because she has the AoE cripple field, there are some characters, like maybe if they had a crazy composition that you could counter pick her with. But otherwise, I would just stick away from her. She's gonna she's she's gonna get out scale scaled, out cleared, out whatever. Athena, loving life right now. Global ultimate, move around this super thick map. Great setup with the taunt surprisingly good clear if you know how to clear with Athena to group up the minions. Watch our Athena guide if you haven't, if you want to know how to do that. Very strong character, can be played solo and support. Atlas, another character that's doing all right. He's getting played a lot less than he used to. There's a couple of people that really shine with Atlas at high level ranked. Utilizing some of his base damage proper, you know, his dash into you plus his ultimate can be a lot of damage, but you don't see a lot of people uh, leaning towards the Atlas. He's more of a flex pick at high level ranked where a couple of people really like him. A Wheelix doing great right now. She has the best stim in Smite. Her ultimate gives tons of power, tons of attack speed, plus it's a great CC ability. Good jungle clear, ability-based jungler, likes the Transcendence Hydra's builders that are so popular right now. Very strong character. Doesn't get picked as often as you would think. Very strong character. Baba well, Yaga. It's bigger than Maddie. Let's go. 
Anonymous bought Almighty Archon bundle from Baba Yaga, been one of the premium mid laners right now. She's been a, a top five mid laner for a long time. Full stacks on Warlocks plus Prophetic makes her super tanky. Five abilities throwing out for damage. Huge zoning potential with her ultimate. Plus she's got a shield. Very good character. Bacchus, another B tier character. Don't see a lot of people picking Bacchus. Bacchus's problem is that his ultimate and his burp are actually really easy to interrupt. His ultimate looks like it's instant, but it's not. Uh, anybody that's ever played Bacchus has slammed the ground a thousand times with their ultimate trying to get it to go off. So if you go against like a Ganesh who's very popular and very strong right now, you're just not going to be able to use half your buttons. You go for your burp. It's a long channel to get the stun. You're never going to get that off. A lot of ways to interrupt Bacchus. Bacchus is a weird one. Bacchus is a weird one because he has one of the craziest like differentials in his early to late game. Bakasura maybe has the worst pre-level 5 in Smite. Uh, his ability to fight 2v2 in the mid lane at level 2 is 0. Uh, there's no chance of basically winning that fight. So you have to just hope that your mid laner knows there's no chance to fight. And so you can go to AFK Farmtown. But boy, is he good at AFK Farmtown. Good chance you end up 2-3 levels uh, at the mid game above your opposing jungler. Once you get that Golden Blade to Hasten Katana online, that's when Bakasura really does start to come online. But uh, got to be careful in the Ultra early, because if you give up a First Blood, you fall behind a level early, it takes you longer to get that Golden Blade, you can really miss out on the Bakasura opportunity. Baron Samdi is great right now. I'm not quite going to put him in S tier, but Baron Samdi, highly underrated mid laner. His heal is one of the best abilities in Smite, period, end of discussion. A lot of CC... Fairly safe considering he has no escape skill because of the mitigations on his ulti, because of the movement speed on his two. Surprisingly difficult to kill. Bastet. Bastet. Right into that B tier. This is like, in terms of the tiers, by the way, just like a general idea of how I think about them. S means there's never a bad situation to pick them. 100% of the time you can pick them. A means these characters almost always work. B is like, this is a flex character. C is a almost never want to pick them. And then D is, uh, there's literally no reason to pick this character. It's kind of the sense of the tier list from pick them every game. No reason not to, to no reason to ever pick them. All right. Onward to below. Oh, well, we got this best at best at her ultimate is great. Her damage sucks. The CC from the kitty. Cool. Damage output. Terrible right now. Terrible. Bologna, A tier character, one of the only auto attack based warriors that works really well right now. And the reason that she works really well is because you just build her ability base because she actually has four damaging abilities. So you just do a full blue stone build on her. You can watch our Bologna guide um, if you haven't yet to learn about that. Really good with like a gladiator shield style of build, but. Don't build her like the old Berserker shield death toll. You're, you're going to hate life because all those items kind of suck. Kabraken can be viable. If there's a composition that's full of all dashes and you want the wall, he does have good CC. He is can He can be harder to kill, but there are supports that do what he does better. Kamazot's problem right now is that Kamazot doesn't really have a home he is okay in the solo lane but he's gonna probably lose and he's okay in the jungle but he's probably gonna lose um so i'm gonna put him down in a c tier his his problem is that he is okay at so many different things but all of the things that he's okay at somebody else basically does better best case scenario for camazots is you're against a stealth comp so you can utilize those echoes to make their stealth useless. But how many times are you really going against like the Loki Morgans of the world right now? Not that often. Cerberus, little bit more viable. You see him pop up in the solo lane, basically never in the support role anymore. Over in the solo lane, you can kind of hybrid build on him because his base damage numbers are pretty good. If you get the pen shred from his two into a full one stun, 
you actually can do respectable damage. Personally, I think that there's just better gods to be playing over in the solo lane. But if there was an emergency situation where you needed to play magic damage in solo, and for some reason Joram wasn't up, you could play Serp. Although I would play Ares. Sardinos, viable hunter right now. Great CC. His ultimate is a big CC. His two is that root cripple. Decent damage in his kit, plus 25% damage on his passive, which makes him great for burning gold fury. Fire giant even works on towers. Good character right now. Chalk, a lot like the other solo laners, which is, is Chalk viable? Yes. Is there really a reason to play Chalk over so many of the other solo laners? Not really. Chalk does everything that other solo laners do, but slower. His one has a longer animation. His ultimate takes a long time to go off. Takes a while for all these things to go. But the one thing Chalk is really good at is against full auto attack teams. If they're rocking like double hunters in like an auto attack jungler, Chalk being able to double stack up his reign for the auto attack debuff stacking with other forms of auto attack debuff means that he is a very viable counter pick to full auto attack comps. Chonga, Chonga, one of the better gods in the game right now. I do think that she is on the more difficult end to play. So I can imagine her at lower level ranked not doing great. But her heal... And her ultimate are what really make her kit right now. Chonga's heal is a 200 baseline heal out of combat, right? In combat, it's probably never going to heal for 200 because people are going to build anti-heal against you. But out of combat, it's a 200 hit point heal, which means it's a thousand hit points of a full team when you're like going to do a gold fairy or a fire giant or push down a tier two. Keeps your entire team in the game. And then her ultimate, inarguably one of the most game-changing abilities in Smite, if you can consistently hit two three-man ultis on Changa, it's nearly impossible to lose the team fight because it's going to do 50% of their HP and it's going to stun them for one to three seconds. Karen, speaking of S-tier characters. Now, Karen is not currently in ranked. So while I can't technically judge him on his ranked potential, uh... We've played enough Smite to know how this is going to go, and Karen will be banned and ranked. I'm sure everybody that's had to play uh, 100% of their casual games against him uh, since he came out knows how good he is. His damage numbers, while very low in PvE, are actually good in PvP. So he participates in the team fight and his tankiness slash CC is second to none right now in Smite. So hard to hit because of his movement speed. So much CC. Not a particularly difficult kit to use either. Cherry is not great. If Cherry... If her three went off 50% faster... And her ultimate did like 10,000% more damage. She would be a cool character. Her one, her two, and her passive are all great. Her three is too easily interruptible. Even though it's a great ability once it's off. We've all seen cherries try to hop down into her three a thousand times in a row. And her ultimate is one of the worst abilities in Smite. Thank you, friend, for getting Anonymous that in-con pack. In con pack if you from... want to get the exclusive in-con pack yourself, it's exclamation mark Nexus on stream, or you can check out the description down below on YouTube. It's only available on our Nexus store, the in-con exclusive pack. Chernobog, good hunter right now. Chernobog's global. We actually just did the guide on Chernobog today. Chernobog ultimate, very strong. Allows you to split push, split up the enemy team. Good damage, fantastic two, 60% attack speed stim, which lets you abuse Silver Branch Bow. Strong Hunter right now. You should add him to your repertoire. Chiron, good ability-based Hunter. I would not build Chiron attack speed like you are most Hunters. Build him like you're building Marty. 
the transcendence, like soul eatery, crushery, heart seekery, bluestone type of build. Chiron has one of the highest damage outputs of all hunters in the game, and it's because his ability at the very end to ult the into a team fight, pop his two and get the bluestone procs on that, means that before the fight even starts, you basically have the enemy squishies down to 50% HP. Very good hunter. Kronos, solidly viable right now. You're going to mostly see Kronos in the mid lane. You don't see a lot of Kronos ADC right now. In fact, the only magical ADC that you're seeing consistently is Freya. But Kronos does pop up in the mid lane, uh, and he pops up in solo lane more than I care for him to. I'd rather you play Kronos mid for sure than Kronos solo. Give me some front line in the solo lane, please. Uh, please. Cleo! Cleo is annoying. I would say she's slightly more annoying than she is great, but she is good. The reason why she is good is because not taking any damage in a team fight while potentially dishing out 100 to 0 on a squishy will always make her a viable option. She is a high skill cap character, and we've all seen really bad Cleos. But even at a high level, her ability to just go into a wall, and if you see her go into a wall, the way that it zones out the entire team can really make a lot of room in a team fight. Cthulhu, not very good. Cthulhu's problem is the same problem that like Ardio has. He doesn't have a home. He is a guardian that is intended for solo in a meta that does not want guardian solos. Speaking of good solo laners, though, might I introduce to you Kukulain? Kukulain, great early game clear. Hard to gank because of his transform. He gets that bonus shield. He's got the root. He's got the push. He's got the ultimate tremble nonsense. He's got built-in CC immunities. He's got a lead Anonymous to get over a little walls. From. Strong character over in the solo lane that tends to win, particularly in the early stages of the game, and become kind of a lane bully, which lets him rotate to, like, the pop a totem at 12 minutes. Cupid, more of a counter pick right now over in the dual lane. I do think that Cupid is viable, but Cupid has a big problem, which is he doesn't love the build that Chiron and Marty get away with, like the bluestone build, because two of his abilities don't do any damage. But he doesn't necessarily love the at full attack speed build either, because he's this weird hybrid character that's part attack, part ability. So he would really prefer some sort of meta where like Transcendence Fail Not are both really good. Like that would be a perfect Cupid meta. And those are not really items that you're building uh, on Hunters right now. So he's just in a weird spot meta-wise for his itemization. His kit is still totally respectable, but item-wise, it just works better with so many other characters. Okay, so Daji is a difficult character to rank because Daji is statistically one of the worst gods in Smite. Um, so I'm going to throw her in B tier. <laughs> statistically speaking, she is bottom 10. But I do think there are viable options for Daji. If they've got a lot of knockups, she has the knockup immunity. And if they don't have a lot of CC immune ultimates, her ultimate forcing people to beads or get yoinked can still be strong. Uh, but she does fall in that flex pick category. Dan Zaburo, absolutely nothing wrong right now with Dan Zaburo. Good kit, good CC, fairly safe. Good amount of damage, good amount of clear, solid all-around pick. If you don't know what character to pick in dual lane, never a bad time to play Danza. Discordia, not doing particularly great right now. Very low pick rate, uh, high level ranked. In fact, I've seen her in roles that she should not be in, like support in solo more than I've seen her in mid lane. Because uh, mid laners are not 
picking a lot of Discordia right now, but her passive does give out a good amount of power. She does have a good amount of CC. You have to build her super high cooldown in order to utilize that CC proper and utilize the fact that her three gives flat cooldown reduction. Could be a good counter pick. Erlang, not a good character. Uh, much like a lot of the auto attack warriors right now, Erlang just sucks. Uh, Erlang would prefer to be a jungler more than a solo laner. His kit just makes more sense in the jungle, but he doesn't work particularly well in the jungle either right now. E set has seen quite a large spike in popularity over the last couple of weeks. She even found herself in the top 10 win rates for a while there, both getting played in support and mid lane. She can be viable in both. Changes the way that you play her, changes the way that you build her, but she is a flex pick, can work in both of those roles. Fafnir down in the B tier, situational pick. His clear in the laning phase is lackluster. But if you are rocking a full auto attack comp, maybe you've got a Freya on your team and you've also got a Mercury in the jungle, right? His buff goes a long way for those characters. But his early game can be lackluster. He is safe. He is a fairly safe pick. But he is more of a counter pick. He can counter people with the disarm, right? He can buff up your own team. You just want to pick him as like a fourth, fifth pick compared to a first pick. Okay. So Fenrir. This is another character like Daji that is wild because he is statistically speaking one of the worst characters in the game again. But sometimes when you play against Fenrir, it feels really, really bad. And by that same logic, I'm going to put him here in B tier, which is to say Fenrir can be a great counter pick to certain gods in Smite. He can wreck a Thoth, right? But there's also insanely good counter picks against Fenrir, which means you don't really want to first pick Fenrir. You'd prefer to fourth, fifth pick him because you want to be utilizing him as a counter pick, not getting counter picked. He can counter a bunch of characters, but a bunch of characters counter him. Freya, one of the premium ADCs right now, worked her way into the top five win rates for ADCs. By far the best magical ADC right now. So if you need more magical damage on your team and you're playing an ADC, Freya has become the go-to pick. Surprisingly strong clear with the conduit gem in the early game. Historically speaking, Freya's early game has sucked and her late game was great. But her clear is actually really good right now, which can help her get ahead early. And we all know how much fun it is to play against a Freya that gets ahead early. Oh boy, I sure hope she doesn't auto attack me three times and a hundred to zero me with her autos that are this wide. I'm not salty. Ganesh. Speaking of S tier characters, Ganesh is everything you want in a support. Uh, while being wrapped up in a little bundle of boring. Uh, not my favorite character, uh, because I like to get kills on support, and that is not what Ganesh does. Well, Ganesh does get kills. He just doesn't get credit for him. It's the worst possible scenario. But Ganesh Silence is one of the best abilities in Smite. His ultimate is one of the best abilities in Smite. His three is a great movement ability that counters player-made walls, and you can dash through them. His one is an okay damage ability, but gives out bonus damage to your teammates, which is a crazy unique effect. There's very few characters in Smite that can do that. Strong laning phase, strong team fights, strong objective fights, strong around phoenixes, strong around your towers, their towers. He's good everywhere. It just feels bad. To play against him, and it feels bad to get a kill on Ganesh, and then somebody else gets credit for it. Geb. Geb is another interesting one. I'm going to put him up in A tier, because I do actually think that Geb is difficult to play, and his early game sucks. 
If you pick Geb, you're losing the laning phase. Almost end of discussion, unless you've got one of the insane duo clear gods like Izanami. But he is also one of the best team fight supports in Smite right now, without a doubt. Geb ultimate for the damage and setup in the late game is very strong. Very strong. His shield, incredibly good ability. Does take actually a bit of skill to use proper though for using it for the cleanse and stuff. But you got to get through the early game. His early game is atrocious. His like pre-level nine sucks. But once you get to the 12 minute marker and you get the first totem spawn and you get that team fight, that is when Geb really starts to come online and he can start helping out a ton in those team fights. You just got to make sure that the game isn't over by the 12 minute marker. And as you know, I would say... <sighs> Statistically speaking, 70% of my games, I would say, are close until like the 15 to 20 minute marker, which is when you start to like see the game go a certain way. And I would say the other 30% by the 10 minute marker, they've gotten out of control right now. So that's kind of like the bet that you're making with Geb is that you're going to be in the 70 and not the 30. So most of the time, you're probably making the right bet. Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is okay. Almost primarily played in the solo lane right now. You don't see a lot of jungle Gilgamesh. You really don't see a lot of warriors in the jungle right now. It's almost exclusively assassins with a couple of flex mages like Ao Kuang and Hebo. Gilga is surprisingly good into one specific solo lane god, and that's actually Jorm. I find that him as a counterpick to Jorm is where he thrives because not only can he interrupt Jorm's wiggle with his kick, he can also jump over it, which means that his ability to actually lane against Jorm and Solo, who's one of the most oppressive solos, is quite good right now, and that actually gives him a place in the meta. Guan Yu, another god that doesn't get played very often. Is technically a support and solo laner. Throughout Smite, almost always better in the solo lane. Unless you want to count like 10 years ago. His solo lane right now is a little rough. He is very reliant on Talo Assault for his clear. And there's a lot of characters that can interrupt Talo Assault. Very easy ability to interrupt. If you wanted to get away with a Guan Yu... Once again, a little bit of a later pick because you want to know who your solo laner is that you're going against first. If it's a character that can stun you, mez you, whatever, out of your three, you're going to have a bad time. If it's not, chances are you're going to be okay over in solo. Hachi Man, one of the better ADCs in the game right now, but he has gotten nerfed recently. He has lost a little bit of his flair. And in general, I actually think that ADCs right now, because of the pacing of the game and how duo lane works, I think that there's going to be very few, even of the good ADCs, probably not in S tier. Because as a duo laner, you would really like to know who you're going against. You would like to know who your support partner is, that kind of thing. So they, they need a little bit more thought process going into those picks. But Hachiman, always a good pick right now. Solid pick. Hades. Hades is weird. Hades is weird because he feels so OP and bad at the same time. I don't know what it is about him. But I'm going to put him in B tier. He, Hades seems to have a very specific following of people that want to play him all the time um and because of that i feel like it skews the data on hades a little bit but hades does not get picked very often at all and you'll see like the same two or three people picking hades a lot if the majority of people aren't picking him then you know they don't think he's so viable Hebo is doing good right now. Hebo is doing pretty good. Uh, he does have counter picks. 
So you got to be careful. But Hebo, when you can get away with him right now, specifically as a jungler, he is okay as a mid laner. He's really meant to be played in the jungle. It also lets him avoid being the target focus throughout the early game when he's the most susceptible. His late game is nearly unmatched, but he is a character you have to be careful with because he does have counter picks. So you can't just pick him every game willy-nilly. He would prefer a defensive support like a Geb, help keep him alive. He would prefer to not go against certain characters like a Fenrir. Great character, though. Heim. Heim sucks. I can't think of any reason to pick Heim right now over, over other Hunters. The build right now for Heim is just not cutting it. The one thing that Heim really has going for him is that his teleport is still one of the safer abilities in Smite. But he's getting out cleared by most Hunters right now. Um... His PvP damage is okay. And his ultimate, when it works, is great. But, I mean, I've played Heim twice in the last week. And I probably had eight ultimates between two games that played the animation. And then I got stunned out of the animation. And, like, that just feels bad. <sighs> Hell is weird. She's another weird one. She is a healer, and some of the healers are doing pretty good right now. I would argue she's honestly probably, like, between an A and a B tier. I'm going to throw her in B just because she is very difficult to play, and I would actually argue that she's a better support than a mid laner right now, and support hell is a difficult task. Gotta be good at smite. Gotta be good at hell in order to make it work. But if you can pull off the support hell into certain specific compositions, she can really do some work. Uh, you'll see a couple of people whip her out from time to time, and you're like, oh, that was a good pick. They got that cleanse going, you know? Good stuff. Hera. Not a really a reason to pick Hera over other gods. Good CC, good damage, good clear, but a lot of mages have that. More susceptible to ganks. She's got some problems with her. Uh, she's also a little bit reliant on 100 to zeroing, and there's just less 100 to zeroing going on right now in Smite. Hercules has had a wild ride this year. Hercules went from being picked Every game, every game to being in the bottom 10 win rates in Smite. Itemization nerfs, character nerfs, slight changes to how the roles play has decimated Hercules and he almost never gets played anymore. He kind of got nerfed into the floor. I've got to put him down in the C tier. I can't in good conscience put a bottom 10 win rate character any higher than C tier. I just, you know, want him ranked higher. Somebody's got to start winning with him. You got to start winning with him in Conquest, you know. Horus, not bad. Viable character, does have counters, is harder to play. Once again, another character that's played in the support role requires a little bit more uh, communication in the duo lane, but his two make or breaks his kit. If you're consistently landing as two, communicating with your team, getting them set up, you stun them, you reduce their protections, you knock them up. It's about a second and a half of time for your team to get ready and follow up. But Horus Ultimate, one of the worst support ultimates in the game. Nearly impossible to use in like a ranked setting as well. Getting people to either group up to use it or land in the circle for the shield. It's just, a, it's not meant to be a ranked ability. It's its meant to be like a competitive ability. Ho Yi, not doing too shabby right now. Kind of surprising for him. Uh, I think that his ricochet helping out on the early clear so he can get the lane really fast is actually helping him. But traditionally, Ho Yi does better in crit metas because of his passive. But right now, pretty difficult to 1v1 a, a Ho Yi. 
He's got great damage, decent CC. His clear is better than it should be because he can actually full clear basically the melees or the archers by bouncing his ricochet off the wall. So his clear is better than just like, you know, shooting it down the lane. Not bad. Not bad, actually. Hunbat! Hunbat suffers from kind of Baka syndrome, which is Hunbat is a garbage character for the start of the game and a, a great character from the mid game further on. Not going to win any fights early on with Hunbat, but once you get to the mid, mid game plus, one of the best ultimates at Smite, two different movement abilities. His overhand smash is finally knock up immune, so you got that going for you. And of course, he's a great Hydra's Procker. Build him full CDR. Have a good time. Ishtar, still one of the go-to ADCs. Probably always will be with her kit. Good clear. CC immunity. Movement ability. Strong single target damage. Strong objective clear. As long as she's got her kit, she can, her, dam, her abilities can basically do no damage and still work. Shelly, as much as it hurts my heart, I'm going to throw her down in B tier. I think that Shelly has a really strong kit that is very susceptible to getting ganked in Smite. The way that the meta is playing out right now, Shelly is honest to God. I think there's a world right now where Shelly could become a ranked meta support because I think her building tank fixes a lot of her problems and she still provides all the CC to the team. Specifically, though, as a mid laner where she has played most often, if you land 100% of Shelly abilities, she's one of the best characters in the game. But do most people land all of their abilities? No. <laughs> That's a negative. Izanami, also going to be up here uh, in this A tier. Izanami is really reliant on two things right now that are making her good. One, she's got incredible clear. And because her clear is so strong, it means that those 30% of the games that are going to snowball, she's on top of it. So you basically, by default, win those 30% of the games because guess who was pushing and getting all the farm? You were. So she kind of just 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 honks on down on that 30%. The other 70% of the time when the games are actually close, she is a strong silver branch bow abuser. Very good right now because of the power changes in Smite. Her stem basically lets her cap out a silver branch bow. She's got built-in penetration as well, which means she's also really good against like three tank comps. Janice, another A tier character. Janice has popped up a lot over the last couple of weeks. Another character that people tend to main. People that play Janice tend to play a lot of Janice. And people that don't play Janice tend to play not so much at all. Janice. But his damage, specifically his ability to one-shot a squishy in the back line if you hit the ulti, does make him a very formidable character. He is a little bit RNG because even the best players in the world are going to miss Janus ult just depending on they get their Aegis off. Oh, they got their jump off at exactly the wrong time. Ah, oh, they had an Afro. She ulted. Ah, oh, like there's things that make it so even if you hit, you miss, you know. Uh, but other mages suffer from the same problem. All right, baby. So many more gods to go. I'd, I'd say we're about halfway, wouldn't you? Whoa, we're halfway there. Oh, so many gods in smite. Jingwei. Not a lot of Jingwei is getting picked right now because Jingwei <clears throat> loves a crit meta and it's just not a crit meta for hunters. Jorm. Jormy Shlormy up to the top of the list. You played against a Jorm in solo lately? 
it's real not fun. Jorm basically is doing everything that Hades does over in Solo, but better. He full clears. He's extremely safe. His late game is very annoying with all of the pools being put down. Surprisingly high damage for his base numbers, which allows him to almost build full tank with the notable exception of he also builds full CDR and you see a lot of Kronos pendants on Jorm. <clears throat> I personally find Jorm to be obnoxiously boring to play, but it doesn't mean that he's not very good. Kali. Kali has had the highest win rate in Smite at Diamond Plus and all levels of ranked for like two months straight. She has been the number one win god across every single rank in Smite for like two months straight. Impossible not to put the number one win rate character at the top of the list. Can't do it. Would be, wouldn't, wouldn't be prudent. She is statistically the best character at all ranks. Capri, I'm surprised that we don't see more Capri because Capri and Geb are very similar, except for where Geb gets ultra strong in the later stages of the game. Capri is more strong in the early mid game than the ultra, ultra late game. But I'm actually surprised that we don't see more people playing Capri, keeping alive a hyper carry like a Kali or a Freya or something is an absolute game changer. So I actually think more people should be playing Capri. Arthur, not doing super hot right now. Arthur is always on the verge of being super meta. Arthur reminds me a lot of Freya, where like Freya is either S tier or C tier, and King Arthur is either S tier or C tier. You know, it's just one of those characters where Gladiator Shield gets buffed just a little bit and all of a sudden he's insane or like Bluestone gets reworked in the way that a prox is slightly different and he becomes insane. So while his performance numbers right now are not doing fantastic, I would say that Arthur is always a character to keep your eye on because he's always on the verge. He's right there. There's that line and the second that he crosses it, he really crosses it. Kukulkin. B tier. You want to know everything you need to know about Kukulkin? Hit ulti, win game. Miss ulti, lose game. That's it. Kumakarna. Down in the D tier. There's just no reason to ever pick Kumakarna right now. He has been one of the worst performing gods in Smite for months because of that nobody picks him because nobody wants to pick a character that has like a 38 percent win rate clear isn't good enough abilities take too long to go off doesn't do enough damage anymore to outweigh that like it used to surprisingly high amount of cc for his inability to really do anything with it honestly the dr changes really goofed him Kuzenbo, that's another S tier character. Any character that can 100 to 0 you without ever hitting you is a good ass character. I prefer Kuzenbo's as supports compared to solo lanes, but he is viable in both. But I think we've all probably in the last month been run out by a Kuzenbo who pressed his two. And if you're a hunter trying to fight into a Kuzenbo and then you look at your death screen and you realize you took 1,800 damage in reflect, really makes you not want to play. <laughs> I would argue he is the least fun character to play against in Smite because you hit your abilities and because you hit your abilities, you died. That's tough. Lancelot. Lancelot is in a weird spot right now. He is performing okay, but the way that he is performing is super varied. Uh, Lancelot is not getting a lot of medium performance games. He's either snowballing or he's getting wrecked. 
Uh, you'll see if he can get his build going early and get a couple level lead, he tends to do really well, gets a blood forge online and starts getting kill after kill. But if he gets put behind early, uh, Lancelot, KDAs, and ranked, not a common pick, but when he does get picked, you see a lot of 10 and zeros or zero and tens. Not a lot of in between. Loki, same kind of thing as Lancelot. Doesn't get picked a lot. People tend to play him in the solo lane, but he's just not a good solo laner. He is definitely a more viable jungler than he is solo laner, but there's really no reason to pick him over a plethora of other assassins. Marty, you know he's going up to S tier. You ever thought you were about to kill Marty? And then he used his 1-2 on a wave and he 100% healed himself because of his passive and soul leader? That feels bad. Maui. Unfortunately for Maui, he's got to go down in the D tier. Um, <sighs> Maui isn't the number one worst god in Smite anymore. I think it's technically Kumba right now. But Maui has been hovering down and around the bottom 10 win rates in Smite for a hot minute. I do think that he's a difficult support to play. And I think that his kit leans itself more towards like a competitive standpoint. Utilizing his three, the ultimate wall, that kind of stuff. But as far as supports in ranked goes, he got a couple of those nerfs, you know. And even when he was at his peak in the SPL, his performance numbers in ranked weren't ever that good. He really has that like upper echelon style. He has like a Horus level of kit where like even when it does well in the SPL, it doesn't always do well lower. Medusa, okay. Struggles a lot in the clear. And if you struggle a lot in the clear right now, you're giving up those first 10 minutes. You got to be careful because you want to make sure at the 12 minute marker, you can rotate over, get to the Papa Totem, all that kind of stuff. Clear is very important right now. Her 1v1 is strong amongst hunters, but not a lot of 1v1ing happening in the duo lane right now. Almost always two or three people there. In fact, a lot of supports have stopped rotating out of the duo lane until like 15 plus minutes into the game. Mercury. Mercury's a tough one because... He is winning a lot of matches right now, but he's also not getting picked a ton. So I'm going to put him up in A tier because he is winning quite heavily when he gets picked, but people are not picking him super often. So there seems to be a little bit of a differential between how well he's performing and how well people think he's performing. And I do think that those will maybe even themselves out a little bit and he'll drop down a little bit in the win rate, but start to get played more. Merlin, Merlin, another guy that's doing okay right now. He does have great clear. Very susceptible to being ganked. Mid laners right now. Tend to be a pretty big party because of the Papa Totem. A lot of rotations, a lot of team fights earlier on in the game. He does burn objectives crazy well. His ability to burn the Pyro, his ability to burn the Gold Fury, Fire Giant very strong. His PvP has dropped off quite a bit. You know whose PvP has not dropped off at all though? Morgan Labay. Morgan Labay, a very good mid laner right now. Not quite like Baba Yaga tier, but a strong go to mid laner. Four damaging abilities, decent movement speed, good CC, good damage, safe pick. Mulan. I feel like if I was playing Mulan every game, I'd give her a higher rating, but I'm not. People tend to play Mulan in weird roles. I still think that she's better in the solo lane than anywhere else. People try to play her support. She doesn't really have a support kit. 
She really has a solo lane kit. She wants to dive the back line. She's not much of a peeler. Mulan's biggest problem is pre-level 5. She's incredibly susceptible to being ganked. So if the jungler comes over at like level 3, you're almost 100% dead on Mulan, which can put you behind very early. So you got to play her safe early, even though your clear is so good and you want to go fighting and you want to go clear. You got to be careful in the early game. Neja, seeing a little bit of a renaissance, being picked a lot in the jungle right now. Even some picked up as a support with a little bit of that tankier, like regrowth style of build. Ring toss, still fantastic in the 2v2 fight, particularly in mid lane where there's so much 2v2ing going on. So many fights around the mid harpies where the ring toss becomes strong. That helps him get through those early stages of the game. Then he turns into a fantastic setup god. You sash ulti on a squishy. Could be 100 to 0. Neath. Kind of blows. Wouldn't say that she's a throw pick. But really no reason to pick Neath over any other character. In fact, I actually, I'm actually going to put her down in C tier. There's just... Nothing that she does better than other characters. Even her ultimate being global just doesn't provide the same impact that like, just pick a Chernobog, you know, or heck, pick an Apollo. Like even Apollo is better than Neath. Nemesis. Clear kind of sucks, but she loves a tank meta, man. She loves a tank meta. They're rocking two, three tanks. You throw down that ulti. She steals a bunch of those protections. Can be a more difficult character to play. Is reliant on auto attack canceling. So she wants a Hydra's and that kind of stuff. Is a very strong character. Recommend giving her a chance again in the jungle if you haven't. Nike, Nike, Nike. Now this one is surprising. But Nike is one of the best gods in the game, and she has been one of the best gods in the game for about a month now. Even though Pridvin does not work on Nike, and by doesn't work, I mean does not work at all on Nike, like literally at all. Soul lane clear, amazing. Team fights, amazing. CC, amazing. Full bluestone, glad shield, proking build. Her damage numbers are great. Her mitigating numbers are great. She gives out that team buff. Combine her passive with the pop a totem. It gives you basically a two for one deal at Costco. Winning a lot of matches right now. She's been up in the top five win rates for a hot minute. Nox, one of the most annoying characters in Smite, but statistically not great. Nobody has any fun playing against the Nox at all. No fun, zero fun. You get no fun, I get no fun, nobody gets any fun. But not great. Nua doing better than you would think. And I do think that there are situational aspects for Nua to be picked. Her ultimate 30 plus minutes. Once you know you stop spamming it on cooldown to build up your damage numbers. That way at the end of the game you can say you have top damage. Does become an incredible useful tool. Both in terms of vision for your team. And also the fact that it's going to hit for like 800 damage. Which means that all of the squishies on the enemy team start off the fight with 30% less HP than yours do. Can be a very good god at the late stage of the game. Odin. Exactly where he's been for a while. Great counter pick against certain comps. Forces them to build certain actives in order to get out of the cage. Early laning phase sucks. Team fight later in the game, incredible. Oleron is another kind of tough god. Honestly, a lot like Odin, except for Oleron has a weird power curve. So Oleron... Early in the game, hits really hard. He's actually really good at the very start. But he's super susceptible to being ganked. Then he drops down in the mid game. 
where he doesn't hit as hard as enemy hunters and his ultimate's on way too long of a cooldown. And then ultra late game, he goes back up again because his ultimate because becomes such an incredible game changer. And it's one of the ways to just like default win a game. So he does like this weird up, down, and then back up again curve. But you can also just get full tilt ganked on cooldown. Osiris, one of the worst gods is might. There's just no way around it. Just one of the worst characters. Just sucks. Real bad. Auto attack base warriors. Not doing good. Pele. Pele is doing okay. She kind of. <sighs> she's not a bad pick. She's not a bad pick. She performs okay. She's not very popular right now because why wouldn't you just pick a couple of other characters is basically what it comes down to. Persephone doing decent in the mid lane. Once again, not a very popular pick, but a lot of damage on Persephone. A lot of damage, four damaging abilities, good CC, fairly safe. She can get over walls. All sorts of good stuff. All sorts of good stuff. Next up on the list, Poseidon. Poseidon crushing it right now. Incredible clear, incredible PvP damage, fantastic gold fury, fantastic fire giant. He's been having a very good year. He's also one of the few mid characters that can easily do the mid harpies on his own. Raw, not loving life as much as his uh, Poseidon counterpart. Plays the game a little bit different. Still has good damage. A lot more susceptible to dying, though. And you do have to utilize his heal for your team. Ryzen, bad. Not a good character. Can't think of a single reason why you would want to pick Ryzen right now. His damage is mostly over time. It takes too long to go off. It is too easy to interrupt. No reason. Rama, solidly good hunter. Good early game clear. Snipe. Works well to finish off kills. Scales really well with the current smite build with the Kins, Xyz, and Silver Branch. Good time for Rama. Ratatasker having a good time right now as well. Not as strong as Thor and Thanatos who are outperforming him. But he is basically Thor and Thanatos light. Same concept. He's got the semi-global. He lands on you. He's good at ganking. His acorn is actually really strong as well. One of the best items in the game. Robin, objectively, still one of the best characters in the game. Uh, as it turns out, when you buff a character's shield and you give him 10 million percent shield and then you nerf 10 damage from his kit instead of nerfing the shield, it doesn't do anything. I don't think I have to explain Robin because if you haven't had to deal with Robin being picked and banned in every single one of your games... Um, then you are truly the, the most blessed of Smite players. And I congratulate you. I congratulate you. Next up, Scylla. Scylla is doing okay. She is viable. Her early game is Cheeks. But her team fights end up being well. I wouldn't recommend her as a mid pick. But situationally, she can be good into certain comps. She can be fairly safe. Sir Cat. Kind of the same reasoning with Scylla. Not a particularly bad character. You see mostly Sir Cat in the jungle. Sir Cat does want crit though. Her passive on the ulti gives crit now, which means you would prefer to see her with a crit build. Crit items, not nearly as meta as they used to be. She can still hit hard single target. She can still be annoying and have good CC. But there are simply other junglers that are just outperforming her. 
Speaking of junglers that are outperforming her, Set up here in A tier. Set doing very well right now. Uh, he's that hybrid auto attacker and ability -er. He's not entirely one or the other, which means that when metas go full auto attack jungle, he can still usually get away with it. And when metas go full ability jungler, he can also still get away with it. So he usually hovers up there in the meta. Not one of the most popular picks in the game, but there are a handful of players that pick set every other game that really, that really boost him up. Shiva, one of the better solo laners in Smite right now, is underutilized, is underplayed, but the entire reason why Shiva can do so well right now is the solo lane build. Dummy good at proccing, glad shields, Pridvin, Bluestone, all of those items. Early game clear and solo is strong. You're going to get the pressure against most characters. Late game team fights run at people. You do 50% of their damage against the squishies. And then you just dance around and you don't get hit with your ultimate. Very good rank character. Very good rank character. Scotty down in the B tier. Just really no reason to pick her. Scotty loves the ability to 1v1. If you could guarantee 1v1s over in the duo lane, then Scotty would be sick. Except for there's two to three people at almost all times during the laning phase over in duo lane, which means that she just is susceptible to being ganked. Doesn't get to utilize the doggo for the 1v1s. Sobek, viable support right now is quite aggressive in the lane. You've got to be careful with his pluck. If you're not careful with his pluck, you're going to get yourself killed. But been around for a long time on Sobek and he's still doing well. Sol, another character that is performing okay. Freya is just better numbers-wise than Soul is. And we see a lot of people playing Soul in lanes that she should not be in. If you pick Soul solo one more time, so help me God. But she destroys the early game in either mid or duo lane. But she does drop off at the ultra late stages. But if you can snowball on her, congratulations. And also, you're going to have an extra 150 gold in your kit because you killed Carol Bastion at the two-minute marker. Wukong! Talk about S-tier characters. All the damage, all the CC, all the immunities. Fantastic with a more damage build. Fantastic with a more tank build. Fantastic with a hybrid build. Great PvP damage. Great PvE damage. There is nothing that Wukong cannot do. Simply one of the best gods in Smite right now. Fuego. Fuego had this moment in time where he was crushing the solo lane. And then we got all of those Smite patches that kind of changed the way that the game played. And none of them were in favor of Surtur. He still is okay over in the solo lane. His three is good clear for the PvE, but he's basically the worst version of Jorm. They play very similar in the laning phase, and Jorm just kind of does everything that he does but better. Susano, solidly good jungler right now. The way that I've described Susano before is Susano is one of the most commonly picked ranked junglers. Because he almost never gets banned. He's just not quite good enough to get banned. Which means he's almost always on the table to be picked for the jungle. Which makes him a very consistent pick that you can get. Crazy CC. Very high damage. Good mobility on that character. Chances are the bands are being used on gods like Robin. Sylvanas. Not getting played right now. Poor guy. His early game clear isn't enough reason to pick him. His sustain from the Wisps isn't enough to really make him a healer. 
too easy to kill and catch out. Not enough really self-peel for himself. You almost see zero Sylvanas' right now, high level ranked. Terra is doing better than Sylvanas. Not a very common pick. Is more difficult to play when she is picked. Atrocious. Ultra early game. But once you get into the mid and late game, Terra does come online. She does become a lot stronger. But her early game does hurt her a lot. Thanatos. Thanatos, one of the premium junglers right now in ranked, and that kind of makes sense. He had gotten that buff on his ulti, which increases the stun duration. He's one of the few remaining gods in Smite that can genuinely solo carry a game because of the way that his passive plus like a blood forge works. It means that if you get one kill, you can get the second kill, the third kill, the fourth kill, the pentakill. One of the few remaining characters since the uh, power changes in Smite that can still do that. Banned quite a lot. Morrigan. Morrigan is fun, but there's really no reason to play her. Morrigan likes a meta with more damage in it and less tank players. The less tank players there are in the game, the more squishies there are, the more squishies there are, the more one-shot targets that Morrigan has, the more power is in the game, the earlier that she can one-shot, less power in the game, takes her longer to get to that one-shot stage, more tanks in the game, less targets for her to one-shot. Thor, another S-tier character. No three-power nerf on his passive, and six-damage nerf on his wall is going to take Thor out of the meta. Thor lands on you with his ult, he autos, he hammers, he stuns, he autos, you get 100 to zeroed from the 5 minute marker to the 35 minute marker. Very standard combo, works every time, will continue to work and make games 5v4s. Thoth, strong mid laner right now. Very difficult to play. He's popping up more and more and more at high level ranked. You do have to be careful when picking Thoth because he is counterable quite a bit. A lot of gods that do well against him. But his ability to stand back and just dish out unbelievable amounts of damage right now when you hit your abilities. One of my go-to picks actually in the mid lane when I want to win. A lot of damage coming out of him. Tia Matt, another S tier mid laner. Tia and Baba in particular have been crushing the mid lane department uh, for a while now. They both are a little bit tankier while still outputting a lot of damage with a lot of iterations of damage abilities. It's worked well in the builds that have been going on in Smite. For mid lane, they've been performing well at high level ranked. Tiamat just happens to suffer from the fact that low ranked players have always sucked at Tiamat, even when she was way stronger than she is now. Sukiyomi, good jungler right now. Slightly underrated, but good jungler. Fantastic Hydra's procker. Actually works really well with the Boomba's hammer as well. Long range poke. His ultimate still does a ton of damage. If you haven't played Suki in a while, you should probably check him out. Tier. Tier is funny because not a lot. A lot of people thought Tier was going to be super, super OP with like some of his changes and changes to the game. Uh, and tier performance-wise has just not really moved. He is viable. And he's a decent character. But he just hasn't moved himself up into like a place where he's carrying games. Or a place where... And it could be the fact that like cripples are just so detrimental to tier. And it's like, you see a tier. And it's like, yeah, just pick cripples. Um, and his solo lane clear while good isn't as good as some of the other gods like Jorm right now. And Jorm being such a meta pick is also detrimental to tier because 
it just means that one of Jorm's, one of Tier's strongest counter picks being one of the best solo laners is like, it's just hard to get Tier into the, into the mix of things. Uller! Uller also down here in B tier. Uller got these buffs recently that are actually super strong, but the build that Uller really wants to go is just a suboptimal hunter build. He still wants the Hydra's transcendence power style of builds, and he doesn't utilize that build as effectively as Chiron and Marty do right now. You can try to rock Uller with an auto attack build, but I do not recommend it. I simply don't recommend it. He's still better with a power build, but those items in general are just not as good. Vamana. Vamana blows right now. He is one of the worst gods in the game. They wouldn't... I'm sorry, here's, what, here's what happened with Vamana. Vamana was one of the best gods in Smite. And what they needed to do was they needed to nerf the duration of Vamana ultimate because that's what was making him super OP. And so what they did was they nerfed a bunch of other things about Vamana and it didn't affect his win rate at all because that wasn't what was making him OP. And then they nerfed the duration of his ultimate, which is what was making him OP, except for the fact that they had already nerfed other aspects of Vamana. So when they took away the ultimate, which was the last thing remaining, then he had nothing left. Then <laughs> he had nothing. So what needed to happen is the duration needed to get nerfed in the first place and then no other nerfs. And then it was just too much. Vulcan doing okay. Very susceptible to ganks. Great damage, but a lot of mages have great damage right now, which means you're basically just picking a slightly harder to hit ultimate mid laner compared to other mid laners and a slightly more susceptible mid laner. Shibalanke doing good right now. One of the meta hunters, uh, especially at high level ranked gameplay. His clear is surprisingly good with bolas. He's got the CC immunity on his dash once you're into the in the air part. And his ultimate remains one of the best abilities for disrupting a team fight, especially at high level ranked. Because of the fact that you can't see for three seconds. Jing Tian, not really getting played at all right now. There's even an argument to be made that he's down here in C tier just because of the, the lack of prominence. Once again, just another god that doesn't really have a home. He doesn't super work as a support and he doesn't super work as a solo laner. He prefers historically to be a solo laner and to get more damage off because he's not quite as good at peeling as he is at diving into the back line but he doesn't have enough clear to work over in the solo lane right now yamoja another character that is struggling a little bit right now i'm gonna put her in the b tier and the reason why i'm putting her in the b tier is basically at the ultra high level gameplay yamoja still works but the thing about yamoja is even when she was crazy meta in the SPL and getting pick banned every game, her performance at like diamond and below in ranked was still horrible. And that logic still holds to this day. She's just too difficult of a God for the average player to play. And so that really kind of hurts her in the winning department. But when you see a really good Yamoja player come out, you're like, damn, that character is so strong. Ymir. Susceptible to dying right now. Provide CC, but so does everybody. His wall is where Ymir really starts to shine. If you can counter pick with Ymir against a team that's like three, four, five dashes, that's when you really get to be able to thrive on Ymir. But otherwise, not so good. Jade Emperor statistically has been one of the worst gods in Smite. Since he came out, and he is still one of the worst gods in the game. Another character, Jade Emperor, a lot like Yamoja, even when he was super popular at an SPL level, one of the worst characters in Smite, even when he was super popular at an SPL level, he had one of the worst rates, one of the worst win rates in SPL. 
He has never had a plus 50% win rate in his entire history as a character at any gameplay level in Conquest. Zeus, not very good right now. Fun, a lot of damage. Loves to use the Bastions like Nezha does, but not a very good character. And then Zongkui, a little bit better than Zeus. Prominently played over in the solo lane for when you want some solo lane magic damage and you still have somebody as a tank pick. But he has dropped off in popularity. A lot of people thought with like less damage in the game and the Zonkui protections, he was going to be super OP. As it turns out, Zonkui is decent. He is viable, but he is also still counterable. In fact, a god like Freya does so good against Zonkui because like Zonkui ulties and then Freya just whoops him and it's like, Aha, nice alt, dude. And that is our Season of Souls tier list. You can see all the gods up here in S tier. These are the gods that are basically getting picked slash banned super consistently slash the gods that there's really never a bad time to play them. A tier made up of all of the gods that are going to be predominantly being picked in your ranked games. These are the gods that usually don't get banned which means that they're left open consistently for you to play and they work most of the time. B tier, this is more flex picks. Maybe it's a counter pick to certain gods or maybe it's a counter pick to a certain team comp or it fulfills a niche role in your team. C tier gods is really gods that there's no reason to be playing them when the other characters are open because there are simply characters that fulfill what they do better. And then D tier are the bottom of the barrel right now. These are the characters that in Smite are just not winning at all. Terrible win rates, terrible numbers that they're putting up and overall just not having a good time with the meta, with the builds, with their current power levels. And that is your season of souls ranked conquest tier list guys thank you for supporting the twitchiest community if you'd like to see more videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos thank you for all your support and have a twitching day y'all